Hey friends, it's Jess, and today we're gonna just be modeling some awesome glasses. I think it's super fun. This stuff would be awesome to put in something where you've got some fun spotlight, maybe some caustics hitting off the glass. Shoot, it's gonna be a good time. Let's dive right in to Cinema 4D. All right, friends, you know the drill. I've already pulled in a backdrop object. If you're new, you can find that here by hitting the cube, holding down, and it's at the bottom. So we're going to be modeling some glass. How do we get started? We're going to want to add an empty spline because we're going to be drawing the kind of outside shape of our glass and then using the, the lathe modifier here to actually create the glass shape fully. So we first got to draw our spline. So make sure you've gone in here and you've added your empty spline layer. And then we are going to click this little corner icon in our window to toggle active view and I'm going to choose this front one. So you just click that icon again and we now have that view set. So to start actually drawing a spline, we can go over here and we see spline pen as this first pen icon. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm just gonna click and drag out kind of a straight line. I want this to be the bottom of the glass and I'm going to only go up a very, very tiny bit because a lot of glasses have like a little bit of a stand on the bottom before they're actually um, moving upwards. So like a lot of cups have a little bit of a lip at the bottom to rest on the ground. And then let's say we want to do another kind of straight shot out, maybe another line that goes up here. And then we'll do one more bit of moving out right. 90 degrees and again once more click upwards 90 degrees so let's say you can just hit the brush selection or any any other tool to get out of this let's say that's kind of the general um, shape we want to our glass now you may think okay now we can drag this into a lathe modifier but actually i want to give this glass some thickness first so um, to do that one thing you can do is highlight all of your spline points and then if you right click, you can hit create outline. And if you just start to drag, you can go inwards or outwards and it will create a kind of outline for thickness for you. So now we can just click off of that. And now when we click out of this view and go back to our perspective view, we can drop this into a lathe. And we have a very interesting glass here. So. This is also a good time where you see like, okay, I think my spline maybe is too wide because this looks a little bit more like a bowl than a glass. So if that's the case, easy enough to change. You just go back to your spline, go back to front view, and we could even use lasso or rectangle selection here um, to select the points and then just drag them left or right. So I'm gonna just, so I'm gonna just do that. Maybe this, and let's take a peek now what that's looking like. If we just re-enable our lathe. So I like that. I think that looks nice. We've got our little lip at the bottom. It almost kind of looks like a Lego piece. It's kind of fun. Okay, so let's say that that is the general shape that we want to have for our glass. Uh, I'm actually going to create a null. I'm gonna double click in here and call this archive because I like to keep copies of things just in case we have to go back. So if you select your lathe, hold control and drag into the archive, we'll make a copy in there. Then I'm going to just disable this. Uh, top one is for viewport, bottom circle is for render view. So if you disable both, it will not be visible in either. Back to our lathe. If you hit N and B on your keyboard, you will see the lines in the mesh. So obviously this is not an ideal mesh to be working with. So we need to kind of uh, make that a little bit nicer. So I'm going to drag in a remesh modifier and I'm going to drag our lathe in there and it already does a lot of the work for us there. I'm going to turn off adaptiveness and I'm going to turn this up to maybe 500. Let's just see. And I'm also going to turn on X. We're just going to do X and you play around with this till you're happy with it. Um, we've got some issues here with the bottom of the glass and that happens if uh, we have points kind of oversect or intersecting with the um, zero point on the X and Y axis. So as you can see, it goes past that point. 
So let me just adjust that a second. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay, if you're getting issues here, like I am, another way you could approach this is before throwing it into a remesh, throwing it into a volume builder and volume mesher. So I'm gonna do that. Let's bring our lathe in there, turn the voxel size of the builder down to like one. And then we can throw this into our remesher, but let's change the uh, mesh density to, let's try 30. Oh, and let's turn on X symmetry again. Okay. And to be honest, I don't think it's too big of a deal to have a little bit of unevenness in the glass because I think in real life, uh, objects aren't perfect. So there's gonna be some unevenness regardless. We'll take this down, let's try 20. And if that doesn't sort some of that out, then I will not worry about it too much. Okay, so let's keep that at 20. Let's just say that we like that density. Um, I'm going to right click on our remesh and hit current state to object. And then I'm going to drag our older remesher into the archive. Let's also rename our remesh to glass base. And let's make a copy and drag that to archive as well. Okay, so one tool I kind of want to talk about that I have not used before in a tutorial that I think is super useful and I used for the first time when modeling some glasses actually is the pattern selection tool. So this is super fun. Um, you've probably seen this in some Maxon videos. It's actually a really nice feature for um, just obviously selecting certain patterns in your mesh. So I am going to go to my loop selection and I'm first going to select a loop here in my glass, but I don't want it to go all the way through because that'll give us some issues. So go to your brush selection tool and let's increase the size. And then holding control down, you can deselect. Oh, and let's also uncheck visible only. And then I'm gonna go to the edge of where the very bottom of my glass would be. So like right there maybe. And this is where pattern selection is going to come in handy. So I'm in my face view, still have that selected. I'm going to go to select and then hit pattern selection. So it may be faint to see, but if you turn your camera, you get these four arrows. And you also have this repeat count and margin here in the attributes panel. So I'm going to uncheck that and just play around here. So you can do right or left. I'm just going to do one at a time and let's start increasing our repeats. And I'm also going to increase the margin. So the margin is gonna be how many like rows of polygons it skips before adding a new line. So I'm gonna say maybe, I wanna be mindful of how many are in between here because I might wanna do another pattern selection in between. So I think I'm gonna do seven and then for the margin, and then let's see if we increase this once more. I want this to be even here too, so we might have to less than that we might have to let's actually go six maybe is that the same one two three four five six one two three four five. yes okay so that's perfect so then if we hit apply that'll select all those polygons we want and i'm going to store this so I'll go up to select store selection just so if i accidentally deselect it we can go back um I also am going to drag this selection onto our archived glass base just in case. But now what we can do is with those polygons selected, I'm going to go to our extrude tool and I'm going to extrude these very little bit. And that's just gonna add some interest to our glass shape. So you could extrude this or you could scale it out or in, uh, totally up to you. And I'm just going to repeat this again, but I'm going to just pick the, uh, maybe the two loops in between these newly created ridges. So I'm gonna speed that up now. Okay, so I've selected that pattern and now I kind of want to scale that up. Or let's see, we could either scale it up or down. If I scale down, it's gonna look like that. If I scale up, it's going to look like that. I think maybe scaling down is a little bit interesting. And I want this to be very slight. Okay, 
So this is our glass shape now. You can take this a step further and then start selecting horizontal patterns even. So we could do something like that and scale that up too. So yeah, that's another option. But for now, this is our glass shape. So I'm going to call this our glass. Yeah, we'll just keep it glass because it's not the base anymore. This is now our edited shape. So next step is adding a material. So for that, you could just go to create material and just do material. And there's already a glass preset in here. So you could do that and then just play with the transmission color. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and create a standard material. Drag that on here. And I'm going to up our transmission all the way up and uh, bring our roughness almost all the way down to like 0 0.0, we'll do 0 0.05. So let's go back to our object view. Let's do grout shading and let's bring back our backdrop. This would also be a good time for us to bring in a camera, set this to 85 for the focal length, go into the camera and just find an angle that you'd like. I'm also going to change my render settings so I'm not in 16 by nine format. I'll my focal length maybe to 120. Okay, so let's say this is an angle that I like. And let me actually unview the material so we don't have that in viewport and you can see my model a little bit easier. Uh, I'm also going to open the render view to the side and dock this over here. Let's just hit play so we can see what we're working with. And it's gonna look funky because we don't have a dome light or anything, but this is where we're at right now. Let's pull in a dome light. And I'm gonna click on our asset browser icon, go to HDRIs and let's pick something bright. Maybe we want this sunny one. And then let's preview that and we might need to rotate it. Already though, it's giving a pretty cool result. Let me, uh, I think my size is pretty high. Let me take this down to 1900 maybe. But I think there's a couple things we could do to make this a little bit more interesting. Um, firstly, I think playing with the color of the glass would be a nice little experiment. Um, if you double click on your glass material that you've made, you can go into the node editor. I'm going to add a ramp. And then I'm also going to pull in a vertex attribute node because we're going to be creating a vertex map with the um, selected polygons uh, we've already made. So first, let's just play with this ramp. So that's how that looks right now. And this is a great way where you could either use this as a um, weight map for the transmission. So you could get something interesting there or you could just change the color. So. I'm gonna go in here and maybe choose, I don't know, let's see, I have some created presets. Let's try this gradient preset here. That will look interesting. And then just hover it over your standard material, go to the transmission and color section. And then if you deselect that, you can see we've already got a really cool result. However, I find that pretty colorful stuff is really dark with uh, glass. So I like to pull on a uh, color correct node and drag that in between the ramp and the material. And then I'm gonna just take the gamma up until I'm kind of happy with it. So I kind of like that, um, maybe even a little bit more. So I like that, I think that's pretty fun. Then what I wanna do is the vertex map. So let's close our node editor for now. We're gonna go over to our glass object and right click and go to other tags, vertex map. So make sure you click on the vertex map as well and check use transfer and that'll open our kind of fields area that we're used to. You can delete the freeze. And one thing that's kind of nice is you can drag in polygon selection um, layers into a vertex map. But I, let me actually rename these cause I forgot to do that before. So if we click back on our vertex map, you can drag your extrude layer into there. So now if we go into our material again and you click on the vertex attribute node, you can drag your vertex map icon into that vertex map attribute name section. So now if we connect this to um, like a material blender 
uh, we can get some pretty interesting results. So let me also pull in the blender, material blender, put that here. Um, I'm going to make a copy of our material just by dragging and holding control. And I'm going to undo the transmission here. I don't need that, but I'm going to take the metallic level up all the way. I'm going to change this color to something kind of yellowy and bright, something like that. And then we can pull this into our material color for layer one. And you can use the vertex attribute as the blend color. So what we should now see when hitting play is gold just on those uh, extruded lines that we've selected. Yep, so as you can see, that worked out. And this just provides us an opportunity to get some really interesting uh, reflections on the ground with our glass or caustics and whatnot. So another thing that I've done before is um, playing with adding a max on noise here for the color of the metallic option. So instead of just doing um, one color, you could play with uh, doing something silvery or um, we could go back to our kind of gold idea. Okay, so something like that maybe. And sometimes you have to refresh your IPR. So that way you get a little bit of slight variation there, but we could push this a little bit further by upping the contrast in the output tab for our noise, maybe to like 0.6. And I'm gonna change my noise type to FBM. Cool. So now if we unsolo that, and refresh. We should get something pretty interesting there on the um, the gold reflections. Another thing I just kind of want to finally do with the glass here is take up dispersion. I'm gonna set it kind of halfway to like 40 or 50. Just keep it at 40. And then I think play with the placement of our dome light here. Kind of try rotating it a little bit and maybe even add in a spotlight uh, if we'd like. You can also play with the IOR of the glass, uh, the reflection specifically. So yeah, definitely worth just playing around with. Let me rotate my dome light so we get that like harsh shadow behind. I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to just render this one out, but yeah, that's kind of how you model a fun little glass. Um, again, you can get super creative with it. That pattern tool allows for a lot of options. Um, oh yeah, and one more thing for our glass shape, I just want to turn on tessellation so we get some smoothed uh, edges that are typically sharp. So this definitely changes the look. You could also just pull in a bevel, uh, but I think this is kind of fun too. So. I really like that. I'm going to render this out and thank you so much for watching you guys. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Please tag me in some of the things you make because every time somebody does that, it just makes my day. I sit in a corner for the remainder of the hour or the day and I cry because it's just so beautiful and wonderful and I feel blessed. So just know that that's what you can expect uh, with tagging me in your beautiful work. Um, <laughs> Check out my Gumroad if you want some free goodies because there's a lot on there. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.